Okay, so this is my this is my version of a prawn cocktail. It's smoked salmon, my own smoked salmon, uh, an avocado cocktail in a glass like this. Um, so you need avocado, obviously. Uh, you need uh, smoked salmon. And what I've done with this is I've taken the whole side of smoked salmon and I've split it down the middle. I've taken the fat off the back in here and I'm going to cut these into little medallions, which are just pure smoked salmon, no skin, no fat. Totally delicious. It's important when you're doing this that you season things. So we're going to anoint this with a little bit of really good olive oil. This is Spanish olive oil from a friend of mine. Um, a little bit of black pepper. Okay, a little bit of uh, lemon juice. Okay, we'll top in here. And then like so. And then we're just going to toss all these together. So all the smoked salmon is dressed and seasoned. It makes a huge difference. Don't understand why most people don't take time to season properly. Got a ripe avocado, so there's a bit of give in it. So we're just going to get in here, like so. And down here, round we go. Out comes the uh, avocado. There are easier ways of doing it, but I want to keep the shape like this. And again, really important when you're doing this, let's get it seasoned. Let's get a little bit of oil, not too much, don't drown it. Rub that on the outside. A little bit more lemon juice, and there we, in we go. And of course, some soft, mild, and sea salt, and a little bit of freshly ground black pepper. Okay, so this obsessive seasoning is kind of important to this dish to get the flavours right. And then we're just going to slice the avocado down like so. Uh, and again, I'm going to make sure that the, the cut faces of the avocado are in contact with the oil and the seasoning. So, it's just smoked salmon and avocado, it's nothing particularly uh, clever. Okay, so nice seasoned pieces of soft, ripe avocado, smoked salmon. A couple into the glass in here. Then we've smoked salmon. A little bit more avocado. A little bit more smoked salmon in here. I'm just chucking it in. I'm, I'm not mucking about with this too much. Okay, here and then a bit of smoked salmon. Yeah. And finally, a little bit of avocado. And I've got some little pea shoots just here. Right here. And a little bit of watercress if I can finish that off. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a beautiful, delicious, fresh, zingy, rich. Oh, it's good to eat. And healthy, too. Lovely. An individual, Venison Wellington, got some beautiful loin of, uh, of red deer, completely uh, free from fat. A little bit wet on the outside, really important when you're frying anything that you pat it dry, remove the juices from the outside. And the reason for that is that if you put something with juices in the, in, on the outside into a hot pan with the oil, the juices boil, it sprays the oil out of the pan, the meat comes in contact with the pan, and the natural sugars adhere to the pan and it sticks. So it's really important that A, the pan is at the right temperature, and B, you remove all the juices. Look at how, how much has come out of that. Um, we're gonna serve this with a little port wine sauce. And we're in a, in a beef wellington. Normally, you would sit it on some uh, uh, some pancakes, some crepe, uh, maybe a little bit of duke cell in there, maybe a bit of spinach sometimes. But what I'm going to do is put a little disc of Stornoway black pudding. So, in any of the resting juices from the venison get absorbed into the black pudding, and it makes it super delicious as well. So, uh, shallot. We're going to uh, avoid any shallot jokes. As in, that's shallot. The veg man did that every day for about 15 years. Is that everything? No, that's shallot. So, get a peel of shallot and then just roughly slice it. And you take the slices and just pop out a little bit, like so, to make some shallot. If the shallot was round, there would be rings, but these are kind of D-shaped bits of shallot. Uh, 
but I just want that nice flavour that you get from shallots. Onions sometimes I find a bit too sweet uh, and blousy in cooking. Uh, shallots a little bit more astringent, finer flavour, and this is a fine dish that preserves a, a fine shallot. Preheat a pan, nice and hot. Okay, so when you put your hand in the pan after about five seconds, you want to take your hand away. You don't want to leave it there much longer. Uh, we've got the venison, and the venison at the last minute I'm going to season with some freshly ground black pepper, a little bit of mild sea salt on the outside, like so. Okay, so the venison is ready. Uh, the pan, just about there, I might just crank that a little bit, a little bit of oil, a bit of smoke. In goes the venison now. We want to work pretty quickly, the, the pan is very hot. So we're going to give that 30 seconds uh, just to get a bit of colour on the outside, a little bit of caramelisation so the natural sugars on the outside turn into caramel and makes the flavour more complex. 30 seconds, bam, on the other side. Make sure the oil is in contact with venison, otherwise it will not cook evenly. Okay. This side here as well. What I don't want to do is to start the venison cooking too much so when it's baking in the oven it ends up overdone. Because I'm looking to serve the venison really nice and rare inside. Nice bit of colour on the outside of the venison, but we haven't started the cooking process. So out onto remove the paper to avoid cross contamination onto a cold tray and straight away in with the shallots don't burn them okay and the shallots we are going to give 30 seconds so a little bit more oil so we're just going to soften the shallots down a little bit color and caramelize little caramelization a little bit caramelization on the outside and then in here i've got a mixture of half red wine and half port so 30 seconds in with the port okay and let that reduce down Boiling off the acidity and unfortunately also the alcohol, deglazing, the, dissolving all these uh, deposits at the bottom of the pan, and finally we're going to add some dark chicken stock. Right, so once this comes back to the boil again, turn it off. We'll come back to this to finish the sauce. If you start to warm puff pastry up, the butter melts, and when you put it in the oven, the butter just leaches out. It doesn't stay in there and allows it to all puff up nicely. This is just pre-bought, rolled uh, puff pastry, and I've cut out two discs, a small one and a big one. The big one's the size of a six inch bowl, and the small one is the top of a mug. Take the little disc and pop it onto your board, and onto the little disc, put your little disc of black pudding. On top of your black pudding, put your shallots, like so, and that's the shallots that we just cooked out with the uh, port and the stock. On top of that, we put the cooled down venison, and then we take the disc of, the big disc of puff pastry, and we use a little bit of egg wash, which is an egg beaten up with a bit of milk. In here, around like so. And then we're gonna take this and we're gonna put it right over the top, okay? Down like so, so it's evenly over. And then we're gonna use our table scraper just to get underneath there and flip the whole thing over so we can start to pull this one, the big one, up onto the little one. Uh, turn it round like so. So just pull it up and round, just so it seals all the way around, like so. So you come round to the last one in there. And then you turn this round, and there you have a lovely little venison on croute. Pop it onto uh, a bit of baking parchment, and get your egg wash out, and give it a generous egg wash on the outside, all the way around. Sometimes I then put this in the fridge and let it set up and egg wash a second time, if I want a really nice dark colour on it. But today we're in a bit of a rush. So we're just going to do it once and then you need to take a sharp knife and just make a couple of little slices in there just to let the steam escape and that now goes into a hot oven 210 degrees centigrade 16 minutes okay. 
you only learn one thing from this, okay, it is that out of the oven, this is still cooking. So if you look at that temperature, 39.7, okay, 39.8, oh, 39.9, it's going up 40. And the venison is still cooking and will continue cooking for another 10 minutes. Shredded red cabbage, red onion, raisins, shredded grated apple, yeah. we've got a bit of uh, cinnamon, there's uh, walnut oil. a bit of walnut oil, uh, and um, so where's the liquid come from? Is that a little bit of uh, red the wine? Oil and there's some uh, red wine vinegar in there as red well. Red wine vinegar, that Cabernet Sauvignon vinegar. Mm -hmm. So it's really delicious. Raw. Make it 24 hours in front. Well, if you make it up, stick it in the fridge over now. What a flavour. Fantastic. Great accompaniment with the uh, Wellington. And then we're just going to carve this here. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do is we are going to just square off the ends. Like so. Then here, and then through the centre, and you can see that beautiful, nice and pink inside. Quick these around onto the table scraper, onto here. So I'm just going to sit in nicely in there. Yeah. And we just get some of this over and around. So it's got the port and then of course there's a bit of chocolate in at the end. Chocolate works really well with game. Great kind of combination. And we go. So, so I right, cut on bits of uh, watercress, just kind of over. And there you have it, that's our right. venison en croute. My black treacle and stem ginger puddings. Now these little bad boys have not been steamed, they've just been baked in the oven. You can see, beautiful, lovely texture. And what we need to do to serve with those is some uh, ginger flavoured toffee sauce. So I'm going to put uh, a bit of dark muscovado sugar into a pan along with some double cream. Then we go here and we're going to boil this up and then we're going to add the ginger and the butter which is going to be delicious. Bring that up to the boil. Bring this to the boil. So this this is uh, stem ginger. You get a little jar of stem ginger and the syrup, and it's the syrup and the stem ginger blitzed down together with a, a, a stick blender. So when your muscovado sugar and your double cream boils, add a wee touch of butter, and like so. And as the butter melts, just keep the whole thing moving. Okay. And this allows the butter to emulsify into the uh, into the sauce. And then to it, we're going to add just a little bit of soft Malden sea salt, so salted caramel just brings the flavour out. Salt and sweet, and then the stem ginger, and that goes in there. And just dissolve that in. Make sure. And the ginger just gives this a real piquancy. Elevates it from just being a toffee sauce. It's something a little bit more interesting and complex. And that's it. It's really that easy. So the best way to heat these wee guys up is in the microwave. Obviously you take them out of the aluminium mold that you cook them in first. And then microwave uh, for full power for one and a half minutes. So we're going to skip a little bit of ice cream in here. Uh, okay, just a bit of ice cream in here. Ooh. So that will scoop of oh, ice cream next to it. And then over the top with the hot toffee ginger sauce, like so. 
And this is what I will be having on Hogmanay mm -hmm. for me pudding. Mm -hmm. That is my black treacle and ginger pudding with my ginger toffee sauce. 